Good morning, everyone, from MCM Comic Con on Saturday. It is the warmest place on Earth, but don't worry, I have a Coke Zero. We are here today to get as many interviews with as many lovely cosplayers as possible, and maybe some not lovely cosplayers as well. We don't disparage here, and we don't discriminate. What we are going to do is... Hello! We are going to go and find some interviews now. And if you're in this video, give us a retweet, will you? Uh, I'm here on my stag do, and so the guys decided to dress me up in a lovely Lieutenant Her outfit, not really realising we're going to a Comic-Con where everyone's dressed up. But uh, as a result, they're not really dressed up, so they're standing out probably more than I am. Good to see some, like, Trex does that here, man. It was, it, it was like, I was looking around at first, thing, oh my God, is this actually just going to be me? But like, I saw one dude there, he had on his, um, his Next Generation uh, outfit on, I was like, oh, thank God. And literally someone came up to me right in my face and like, Captain Benjamin Sisko. I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am, I am loving the Deep Space Nine representation that's going on here. This makes me very happy. Deep Space Nine is my happy place. I think that's obviously most Trekkie's favorite show. Deep Space Nine is the best. Mm. It, has yeah. it has everything. It has yeah. battles, it has diversity, yeah. it has, it's just the best. And also, sorry, I just want to say, Sabina, I have just noticed your earrings. They are incredible. This is actually supposed to be Spock. I forgot my ears at the hotel, so. <laughs> it's funny, because actually, does the way you've kind of got the wig, I like the way you've got the frame on the ears, so it kind of works. Yeah, I, I try to get the frame on the ears to like have the pointy ears stand out, and well, now my normal ears stand out, I guess. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, Spock was half human, so we can just say that you're playing the human half of Spock. Oh yeah, maybe I am, because I'm also very bad at being serious, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, not me, I'm a very serious person. Very, very serious, yes, yes. Who are you dressed as? I am Lieutenant Uhura from the 20 2009 Star Trek film. Oh my goodness, yeah. And, and who are you dressed as? Wow, funny enough, I am Beverly Crusher, Chief Medical Officer on the Enterprise. Excellent, which we love, we just, and we see, I see we're season one Crusher as well, which we really like. Uh, very, very nice, very nice. And, um, you know, if you see a random Pulaski walk by, you know, how, how will we react to that? <laughs> I think we'll have to ask some questions. What would you like to see in a legacy show? Um, I, yeah, I'd like to see a return to sort of old old track formats um, of more episodic ventures with over art, with vague overarching arcs um, going into the, you know, the, the adventures on the, uh, on the G and seeing Seven's character develop with that. Um, seeing what happens with Jack, uh, especially Jack, so he seems to just be on the bridge without being given a specific role. It'd be quite good to see him um, specialise in something and that carry on. Maybe some backstory on Cisco, a little bit more backstory on Cisco. That's just off the top of my head. Just, just more, just, just more. Just, just give Terry the reins. Just let him get on with it, and just, just more. It, 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 it's funny because you, 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 so many people agree and say that. Oh, just give, give Terry the reins. If everyone gets their wish, Gary's never sleeping again. Uh, so overrated. <laughs> you don't need to sleep. As many old legacy characters as possible. Not so bothered about Seven and the crew of the New Enterprise, if I'm honest. Um, but hey, get as many old characters in, hopefully for more than one episode, uh, and just keep, just keep the 25th century going. So for me, that's my say my era of Star Trek. I love all eras of Star Trek. But the 25th century, you know, keep keep it going and bring all the new guys, uh, the old guys in, but with new characters too. So yeah. I've been trying to catch up with it as much as I can, but in truth, I've been really busy, so I've not been able to like really sit down and get into it all. But I still play loads of um, Deep Space Nine in the car whilst I'm driving, which is a really bad thing. But it's just the audio I listen to because it's familiar sound when I don't want to listen to music. That makes perfect sense. And again, just just to be clear, audio, audio while driving. We're, yeah, we're not yeah, having yeah, no, no, none of that. No, and you're there doing that. No, you don't want to do that. It's a bad look. It's a bad look. But if you were to pick one character from all of Star Trek to come back and have a special, a movie, a series, who would it be and why? I could think of a couple of things. I mean, for starters, I could think of uh, Jerry Ryan as seven and nine for obvious reasons. But you know, if we, if we come off of that and be a bit more serious, we, we could actually go. Um, you know, Lieutenant Commander Data, simply because he is. Uh, he's pretty much. He's. He's. Uh, he's going to outlive everyone else. Um, he's seen a lot, and he can actually bring a lot more to the table because he's seen how things operate and how things progress. So Lieutenant Commander Data, definitely. I think there is a really obvious answer. Cisco as a prophet. What's happening here? You know, I would love to say it. I would love to say it. Otherwise, also, it would be nice to see Jadzia Dex. I know she died, but you know, 
people die, they can come back. I think it would be Bones. I really like Bones and I think there's a lot of, to unpack there. So I think like having a movie about Bones, like any part of his life, he's being afraid of like the elevators and stuff in that, and he's still on a spaceship. But what what's going on there? And also like his his family at on Earth that, that he had. Like there's so much to unpack. There are so many movies to be made about him. Two Vicks. I'm telling you, there's a horror movie to be had here. I definitely would love to see like a spin-off focused on like Quark, because Quark is always one of my favorite characters. Like he's like, you know, he's really funny, he's like actually quite layered, he's got some of the best lines and scenes in Deep Space Nine. Like they reference him occasionally in Picard. And obviously he did show up in that one episode of uh, Lower Decks where they went back to Deep Space Nine. And what I loved is that they brought obviously Armin Shimmerman came back to reprise the role. And apparently like he actually keeps the prosthetic teeth from when like he still played Quark and he puts them back in when he voices Quark so he still has that traditional like Ferengi kind of like slurring to his voice but I'd love to just see him come back and just see what shenanigans he's got up to since like you know the end of Deep Space Nine like you know and maybe how much he misses Odo as well like after Odo went back to the Great Link because like as much as they love to bicker I think they did like you know I think they considered each other like best friends in a weird kind of way so yeah if there was one character you could bring back, who could it possibly be? I don't know. Let me think. Yep, I would bring back Ben Sisko from The Prophets. There you go. But I would like to see a lot more um, newer stuff being made, to be fair. I know there's a lot of um, legacy things being built with bringing back a lot of the older characters and that, but I think in order to go forward, I think Trek needs to kind of explore newer characters. I've got a newer um, adventures, so to speak. Ooh. I would say Captain Sulu because you know a lot of the original series I know they got in Walter Koenig for a voice cameo but you know get Sulu in one more time you know he's been asking for a proper episode or show for so long why not Sulu? It's definitely going to be Janeway and Chakotay. Are you a JC shipper? Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe we should bring in some old foes like the Kardashians and maybe some Klingons, spice things up a bit. But at the same time, we've got to keep it true to the Star Trek sort of image and we've got to keep it right. We don't want it all about warfare. Star Trek is Star Trek when they're actually experiencing new civilizations like in Discovery, etc. And anything on those lines, really. But again, all positive. I mean, Cisco would be great to see come back, honestly. Um, but I mean, some of the other DS9 characters, um, like Kira, Kira, I knew Kira's come back in Lower Decks, but like a more modern, uh, up-to-date version of Kira, I guess, of seeing what happened there. Uh, we'll see what happened with General Martok and the other Klingons, you know, with the collapse of Romulan uh, as a power. Just gives them a bit more influence in the quadrant, I guess, and it'd be interesting to see that. I really liked Data. <laughs> Data's interesting to me, like, I just, I love Data, so I'll say Data. If we can't have two Vicks, it has to be sure. That's, I think there's so much there that could have happened. Or maybe even like a Riker on the Titan, the time when he was on the Titan. There's all of that to be explored yet. So, one of those three. I, th I think there's a there, there's something to be said for just as obviously in, in, we know the episode you know seven never got to say her you know engage or whatever it is. So just you know we we'll, we'll pick up exactly from that moment and just as she's about to speak, Shaw appears on the bridge and is like, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I would like Gowron back too though. I love Gowron. Klingons. I'm sure we could we could mirror universe something. You know, that's you know. I'm no mirror universes. That's bad. That's bad. I can just imagine like, you know, mirror universe Gowron. The one thing he doesn't have is glory. Um yeah, we haven't seen much of Orion, so would love to see him come back. You're gonna edit that mistake out, right? Okay. <laughs> I personally think anything deep space nine wise would be really appreciated and content that way, maybe some Cisco as well, anything sort of that hasn't been done for but again there's so much content there it's just amazing what we can draw from and anything's going to be exciting really season two of strange new worlds june 15th can't wait what are we looking forward to the most in season two uh ooh. actually no it's uh when they do the crossover with lower decks that's what we're all we're all excited for that most lower of all decks. yeah lower decks. <laughs> yeah i think i think yeah we're definitely all on the same page yeah paul wesley <laughs> just more strange new worlds just more star trek and the crossover. I think that crossover. See Boimler and Mariner in real, in the flesh, as it were. New uniforms. 
Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Congratulations as well, Stag Do. Um, when is the big day? Uh, the 8th of July. July. So you heard of it. And where do we all need to go? Uh, <laughs> hall. That's the Excellent. Cool. Three. Brilliant. You heard it. That's where we need to be. We all storm the place at that day, at that time. Rob, you're a gent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's, it's, like, it's like the weather itself is celebrating the con just along with everyone else. It's been, it's been wonderful. It's been, it's been a lot. I'm going to sleep for as long as I can get away with after this, but it will be a happy, restful sleep. So from all of us at Trek Culture and including the wonderful poor, poor Chris who's had to hold this camera for the whole weekend, uh, and has just done a bang up job as well thank you so much to everyone you've been awesome live long and prosper and just keep that creativity running thanks very much